now uh, we'll do it another way, assuming you know the series expansion, the series solution, and show that the uh, uh, generating function will give you the same series solution. So you now just write down the uh, Basel equation. This all this J, days of new. The argument is X, so we just not writing the argument out explicitly. Okay, so this is the better equation that we have seen in chapters, chapter seven also. And by assuming a serious form, you can find a serious solution, but for the J, they knew. And now what is the starting point for this chapter is write down a generating function. This one we have seen that in the homework of chapter 11. Minus P equals to some in x okay all right so this is a generating function for basal function of all integer order obviously because the summation is uh, using integer so n must be an integer so these are basal function with uh, integer order this equation apply for integer order. The new is the order of the function, but uh, it can be complex. New actually can be complex or, or other real number or even complex. But uh, the most commonly used are integer order. And then the next one would be real order. If you really get the first special problem, you might encounter complex order. But, uh, not that common. But the first version you can get a serious expansion using the generating formula and compare that with what we got in uh, chapter seven. If the two are the same, then you know that uh, this expansion will give you the correct solution for the Bessel equation. So that's that's the point. And the idea is that. Uh, to, to get a serious expansion, we can expand this function because this is just ex exponential function. We can do that, right? Use the k expansion or exponential function for this argument. Then you get exponential function. I mean, power series of power of t and power of x. And you group all the power of t compared with this form and hope then uh, you will get a serious expansion for the, the coefficient, right? So that's the idea. So, so uh, let's do this. So this is exponential function. First of all, you separate the two factor, two exponential function, because uh, you take the power of this, this will mix up the positive power and negative power of P that might, not be easy to uh, to separate those out. So first you change the change the two. Right. right. And then you use the Taylor formula. Taylor expansion. Let's follow the subscript uh, whatever the index. The first one is R, the second is S. Follow your textbook, is R. R is an integer from zero to infinity. And this is just the Taylor expansion or exponential function. So one of R factorial, X over T divided by two to the R power. Right, so this is just the, this one, that's the first factor. The second factor is uh, another integer s from zero to infinity. And 
likewise, you have this uh, S factorial in the denominator, but then you have minus, this is a minus, minus uh, argument, negative argument, so you have minus one S power, and you have X over two P, Okay. Now, uh, now you, can, you you want to finally you wanted to compare with this one. And this one has p to the n power. So you have uh, you want to separate t, the power of t. The power of t from for this one is t to the r and then times t to the minus s, so all together is t to the r minus s, okay? And you want t to the minus s compared with t to the n, it does suggest you to do a change of variable. So we define t r minus s as, uh, as the n. So you would define, we define uh, n equals to r minus s. Okay, so instead of summing R and S, you want to sum over N, and hopefully then another sum will give you the summation, the series expansion for J of N. Okay, now, uh, let's write it this way. So you need the sum over N. Now the limit for N and the other, the other, integer we need to figure out a little bit uh, carefully but uh, let's so let's just keep it without talking about the limit first and we'll figure out the limit later with some of n and let's choose some of s okay so we want to get r in terms of n and s so r is n plus s okay so all together Make sure I got it correctly. N is R plus S. So R is N plus S. R is N plus S. And let's get the uh, everything else. Your S vectorial does that doesn't change. And then you have minus one to the S. That's you can keep that. And you have two to the, this is minus R, this is minus S, so you have minus R plus S, but R is N minus S. So N minus S uh, plus S, right? No, R, R is N plus S, right? Let's see, let's see. Okay. This is two is minus R, so minus N minus S. And this is minus S, so minus two S. Right. So, and then you have X. X is R plus R plus S. R is N plus S, N plus two S. Right. And then you have two T. T is R minus S, R minus S is N. Okay, so we got everything in terms of N and S instead of R and N. Okay, so now let's move a little bit over here. Now the next step is to figure out the limit. And limit of N and S. And that might be easier to do it with a little graph. So originally you have R and S, so you have R and S, and both are from zero to infinity. We have zero to infinity, so you have zero, zero, and you have one, two, three, R, and then one, two, three, right? Now, n is r minus s. So n will be zero at this point because both are zero. And then uh, 
on all the diagonal lines will be all zero with this line. Zero. This diagonal line is n equals to zero, right? And likewise, with this point is n will be one because of r minus s, s is zero. So this is n equals to one. Likewise, this is n equals to one. At this point is n equals to one, right? And then likewise, this, this point, r is zero, r, s is one, so this n is minus one. This is minus one, so this line is n is minus one, and so on, right? So you, you got the, you got the pattern, right? So n is zero at this line, n is one, n is minus one, and, and so on. So you got n is two here, n is minus two here, right? So quite obviously, n will go from negative infinity to infinity because uh, you can keep going, going this direction and that direction, right? So n, so n has low limit, so n is from minus infinity to infinity, which is nice because uh, we want this one. We want to get this summation. Now s, s is, s will depends on whether n is positive or negative because when all the leg, all the, these are, uh, n positive line start from s from zero, right? n is one, n is two, right? This also n is zero. So if s, s, if n is zero or positive, then s is from zero. And obviously we can go to infinity. So upper limit is to infinity. So zero if it is zero, one, two, right? So all the positive integer and zero, you can start S from zero to infinity. So there's no limit from S. It's just like the same before, but for negative N, like minus one, minus two, your N is minus one, the S, is, S starts from one, right? If N is, <laughs> right wrong. This is n. This is this one going here. If n is minus two, then it starts from two. S starts from two. So this will start from minus n. If n is minus one, minus two, and so on. Right? So, so now at least you have two cases you need to worry about whether n is zero and positive or n is negative. Okay, I hope my everything got it. Okay, is it clear? This is this part. So this is important because uh, we need to separate the function in two cases. But anyway, uh, because uh, this is already of this form. So whatever here is a series expansion for Jn, base of n. Right now, for we can write it down now for the two cases for n greater or equal to zero and n is integer. And uh, just by comparing this with that, so j sub n x is equals to sum over s from zero to infinity, and then you have. Uh, I mean, depends on your convention. Uh, this is still a power series, right? This supposedly is your uh, equation 14.4 in the textbook. So minus one to the s power s factorial n plus s factorial x over two to the n plus two s. Okay, but this is the series expansion coming from the 
generating function. And you can look up the chapter seven, this is exactly the same form that we got from the, the power series expansion. And at that time, what we did uh, is just assuming this solution has a power series and then substitute that power series into the equation and then match term by term and to get the iteration form. And at first you get the so-called the initial condition and the fix the leading power of, uh, of the solution. Once you get that and you figure out, uh, in this case, uh, it's, uh, it depends on the initial one. So, you, you skip every two, oh, two power because there's two S, right? Depends on what N is. So e, either it's all even or all odd, right? Because of this, this uh, two S power. But uh, that all figure out uh, if you use the series ex expansion. And the fact uh, here you get getting from the iteration formula. And of course, uh, these function are linear linear solution. So there's an unknown co coefficient that you can add. So you can multiply by any constant. C is still a solution. And by convention, you define J this way with the coefficient written, written this way. So basically it fix the proportionality constant. But anyways, uh, this is the form that we got from uh, chapter seven also. Okay. So now we have to a little bit of just a little bit of time to figure out the, the other case for uh, negative n, n smaller than zero. Now uh, we can we can change right. This is j, still j n, or we can just say we consider j. I mean, you can change, let me just write change n to the minus n. So the n becomes a positive, positive integer, okay? So now then we write j minus n here. The only thing changes now is, uh, is x is summing from minus n, now it's changed to n, right, it's changed to n and to infinity, we still have minus one to the s power. Let's see if we cover everything. Okay. And then uh, you have n plus s becomes n s minus n because we change n to minus n, so s minus n factorial. And the s factorial, the rest is x over two. And then two s plus n becomes two s minus n. Okay, so this is for minus n. n. Okay, now uh, we can put this into a similar form as, as this one. If we, oh, as I can say S equals to yeah. right? Uh, we shift the uh, shift the summation. So uh, that will require that uh, you will define it another S, right? Because uh, this S is from N to infinity. You want another S. You want to shift the, the integrate uh, summation index such that it start from zero to infinity to compare with this one. So, uh, I mean, I cannot see this very, I mean, I usually couldn't figure this out in one step. So maybe you you can do that. We are smarter than me, so you can do that. But uh, I usually do, do that in two steps. So to change S to another, integer s prime s prime equals to s minus n. So when, when s is start from n and s prime is start from zero. Okay. So that's how I would do it. So change n minus n that is equals to now sum over s prime from zero to infinity. 
All right. And this would be minus one. S now will be S prime plus N. And then S minus N becomes S prime plus N minus N. So this is S prime. Now S is S prime plus N. This is this one. And then you have x over 2, 2s two minus n becomes 2s prime plus n minus n. Okay. Now, the second step will be get rich of the prime because s, whether you call it s prime or s doesn't matter. So that's the second, second step. And now some of And this is getting the minus one and all not minus one to the s. You have s factorial, s plus n factorial. Two and two n minus n is just minus n. So this n two s minus n. Okay. So. Now, if you compare this with that one, so the two are exactly the same except this factor, except this minus one to the n power factor. So you, but this is not in summation. You can take that out of the summation. So you minus one to the n, and this, the rest is exactly this one. So J, so n. Okay, so this is a important, let me just write this way to minus n. This is an important property of our Bessel function, which relate the negative integer power, or negative integer, integer order to integer order with a minus one to the n power. So it depends on whether it's odd, uh, even, so either it's the same or the negative. And this shows that the uh, negative integer order of, of Bessel function is linearly dependent on the positive integer order. So whether the order is positive or negative integer, uh, they are not independent. So for integer order, you need a, a second solution. Okay, so that is uh, an important property. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that show that the, the Generating function, this one gives you the exactly the same power series, and that can be applied to either positive or negative integer. Okay. 